Okay, we're going to start. It is one minute past ten. Welcome, 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 welcome from Ellie, from myself, and I've got my family here with me. I've got Big Anne, Junior Anne, Baby Anne, all coming to join us um, to talk today about star number three. Please don't worry if you've not done star one or star two. You'll find them on the Facebook page, or I will give you the link for my YouTube page if you just message me later on. Okay, so you can still catch up and you can still send me your photos. You can still tag me in your photos and I'll still send those certificates. And we do apologise if we're a bit slow in sending you those messages back. We're just a little bit busy at the moment, but we will get to you. So just keep on sending those to me, okay? So star three is all about choking. If you miss me already, I did say it'd be good if you can get some paper. It'd be good if you can get some sellotape or some blue tack or something to stick the um, paper to your teddy. It all become clear a little bit later on. So we're going to be talking about choking and using that AED. <laughs> I know, they should know because hopefully on Star 2 I talked about the AED, which is this thing here, the defibrillator, the shocky thing. We're all going to be explaining how to use that later. I know some of you have already messaged me, they have, they've already told me that they've been looking at where their nearest one is. So make sure um, you have a look at that later today, but I will show you how to use an AED. Okay, first of all then, choking. What is choking? Ellie, do you know what choking is? No, that's not choking. Choking, all it means in very simple terms, and I'm going to use little Junior here, imagine that you've got two slides. There's one slide that goes from your mouth all the way down into your belly, and that's the one that gives us lots of energy when we put food in our mouth, goes into our belly, and it gives us lots of energy for the day. We also have another slide, and that other slide goes from our nose and our mouth, and it goes all the way into our lungs. That's the one that helps us breathe. So we have two slides. Now when we choke, what that means is that the food that's supposed to go down the slide into our bellies, it hasn't gone down that slide. No, it hasn't. It's gone down into our lungs, and that makes us choke. It might have not got all the way to our lungs, but it might have got stuck somewhere because food's not designed to go through the smaller slide. So we might feel we're choking. Now, in order to avoid choking children, what the best thing is to do is make sure that we don't eat big bits of food. You know, not big grapes. We should always make sure we cut the grapes up and we shouldn't be running around as we've got food in our mouth. No, we must make sure we sit down and eat our dinner. Don't eat food in the car. And if older children are home, make sure you put all those little things out of the way for younger children. Because lots of younger ones, like these ones, they like putting things in their mouth. And we don't want to do that. So prevention definitely is better than cure. Oh, I'm going to come on to that. Ellie said, how do I know if someone is choking? It's a very good question. Because there's lots of different ways of choking. And I'm sure we've all put maybe a crisp down our mouth and we get <coughs> and we start coughing. That is a type of choking, but it's not the type we're going to talk about today, because if we cough, we can normally get it up again. But the choking we're going to talk about today is the very, very bad one. Very bad one where there's no noise at all. No noise. Okay, and if there's no noise, we sometimes don't know you're choking. Okay, so let's say we've got little, little land here. Little land's choking. Is that really eerie silence where there's just no noise? And parents and carers, sometimes they know children that you're up to no good when it goes very quiet. But sometimes we might not notice because it is so quiet. So little land here, we'll know because of that really eerie silence. But also, we tend to put our hands around our throat. Go on, Ellie, like that. Yeah, we put our hands on our throat when we're choking and our eyes can really bulge out and really stick out. Can you all show me your eyes sticking out like that? Yeah, and our hands, can you put your hands up like this as well? Go on, Ellie, up like that. Good. So that's a sign that we're choking. Now sometimes if there's no one else there with us, what would be a good idea would be to make a big loud noise. So Ellie, can you just hold this pan like so? So if Ellie was choking, she must make a noise just to let someone know that something's wrong. Because when we're choking, we're not going to be able to go running around and asking for help. And we won't be able to talk. Okay? Ellie, can you go sit over there? Thank you. So when we're choking, we're going to let somebody know we're choking by making a big loud noise where there's a clap because you won't be able to scream. And then you're going to make sure that you try and cough. 
Okay, so you would try and cough in order to get it out because you forget to get it out. And hopefully then somebody is gonna come and try and help you. Now you're gonna to learn today what to do if you are that helper. You are that person that's gonna go and help somebody that's choking. Maybe your younger sibling that's maybe choking. So this is a little lad here. So little lad's choking. She's alert to me that she's choking. She's made a big loud noise. She's clapped her hands and she's already coughing. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna go, Annie, are you okay there? Can you keep coughing for me? Cough. Now, if you want to use a cushion at home, or you can use a friend or your mum or your, your siblings there or your carers, your parents, whoever's there at home, you can do it with them, but please do not hurt them. So tell them to cough, 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 cough. I want you to lean them forward and I want you to put your hand across their chest like so. And then you're gonna find their shoulder blades. Now children, this is the one we've gotta be very careful because we're only practicing because they're not really choking. If you're using a cushion, you can hit the cushion, but if you're only using a person, please don't do it too hard. If you're using a teddy, be careful because teddies have feelings as well. So lean them forwards and we're gonna use the heel of my hand, which is this bit here, and we're gonna hit them between the shoulder blades to see if it's come out. Because we're trying to win them. It hasn't come out, so we're gonna go again. Here, check again. No, that's two, count with me. Three, four, still not out. And five, we've done five of those. So the first thing we did was when I realized he was choking because he's made a loud noise, haven't you, Anne? I come along and say, cough, Anne, cough. And then I'm gonna lean Anne forward and we're gonna do five back slaps. Two, three, four, five. Now that's not worked. So then we go to the next bit, which is abdominal thrust. Now that's a big word but hopefully we might know what abdominals are. Or you might hear someone talking about your abs. Your abs are these muscles here. Mine are hidden underneath my t-shirt and under other layers of things. <laughs> and, but your abdominals, yours are stomach muscles. We're gonna go just above your stomach muscles and underneath your rib cage. If you poke it very gently, it hurts. That little bit there, your solar plexus, that little bit there underneath your diaphragm is the bit we're gonna aim for. Can you all find that little bit on yourself? Good, but don't poke too hard because it does hurt. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to put my thumb inside my fist. I don't know if you can all see that. My thumb is on my fist, so my knuckle sticks out. And it's that knuckle there that I'm going to put in that very small, really small area just underneath your rib cage. And the other hand will come over the top. And then a thrust is when we pull really hard. Now we don't do that on anybody unless they're choking because it really does hurt. Okay? So you can do this with your teddy, um, or you can do it with your cushion. What I want you to do then, I've got little Anne here, she's wearing this special vest so I don't hurt Anne. I'm gonna put my thumb inside my fist, and then I'm gonna put my hand over the top. I'm gonna lean them forward, and I'm gonna do what we call an abdominal thrust. So it's a belly thrust, okay? And I'm gonna pull inwards and upwards really hard. So inwards and upwards. So leaning them forward, I'm gonna go, oh, oh did you see that? It came out. And you're okay, it came out. And that managed to get the blockage out, so the food came flying out of her mouth again and she'll be able to breathe. If, however, it didn't come out, guess how many you're gonna do? Can anyone guess? You're gonna do five of them, five. So if it hadn't come out, I would do another one. Oh, it's still not out, Anne. Keep going, keep coughing. Three, four, five. Oh, and it's still not out. So then we're gonna go back to the beginning and we're gonna do our back slaps and we're gonna do it a lot harder, okay? So remember, you can practice on your teddy or a cushion and if you are doing it with somebody else, like your brother, your sister, your parents, your carers, you can't hit them that hard unless they were choking, okay? So let's do that again, shall we? So Anne, little Anne here knows she's choking. She's made a big, loud noise, haven't you, Anne? You've got a big, loud noise. Woo! Let us know you're choking. Our hands are up by the throat. We've come in and go, ah, it's okay, cough for me, cough. Can you keep coughing? Okay, that's not working. We lean her forwards and we hit one, two. How many are we gonna do? Can you remember? Three, four, five. We do five back slaps, it's still not out. So now we're gonna do five abdominal thrusts. One, two, three, four, five. It's still not out. And we're gonna keep on going until it comes out, okay? So we've got to keep on going. 
Now, if it does come out, we must make sure that we get them to hospital because it hurts when we do that to ourselves and we want to make sure we get checked out. And if it's not coming out, you're also going to make sure you call that number, which hopefully you all remember, 999 or 112. Hopefully we're going to make sure we call that if we can't get it out, okay? So that's what we do with a choking child, but also we do that if your parents and carers start choking as well. So we do that for an adult. So an adult and child is exactly the same. So hopefully you remember what to do. We tell them to cough. We then do five back slaps. We then do five belly thrusts, don't we, Ellie? Are you gonna remember how to do that? She will, she says. <laughs> I'm gonna to come to that. Ellie's saying, what do I do if my baby sister or brother's choking? Well, this is why baby Anne's here. She's gonna show us. So if your baby sister or your baby brother is choking and a baby is someone about this size, up to about one years old, it's nearly the same thing that we do. But you've got to stay calm because it's not very nice when you see someone choke. So you've got to make sure you stay calm the whole way through. I'm going to take her hat off just so we can all see. But if she's choking, you'll be able to know because again, the eyes will be popping out at you. Now she won't be able to make a noise because remember when you choke, you make no noise and she hasn't got big enough hands to be able to make a big banging noise like you can. But we'll be able to tell she's choking because the eyes and the colour of her face will start to go a bit paler. So we lean her forwards and hold her arm, or maybe across your legs, however it's easiest to do so. And you've got to keep her head supported, head lower than bottom like this. And then we're going to hit between the shoulder blades, same place as we hit each other. Now obviously don't do this on a real person unless they were choking. You can use your teddy or you can use a cushion. We're going to hit and we'll have a look. Hit, have a look. Can you guess how many we're gonna do? Here, we're gonna do five as well. Oh, I've lost count. I think that was five, so we'll do five back slaps. That still not work. We then turn your baby over, like so, and we're going to do chest thrust this time. So on ourself, we did belly thrust, you know, abdominal muscle ones. But on a baby, we're going to go in line with their nipples, and we're going to use two fingers and we're going to thrust like so. Did it come out? No. And we're going to go again. It's still not come out. That's three. Still not come out. Four. No. Five. Still not come out. So we keep on going and we make sure someone is calling that ambulance for us as well. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay. And then we keep going because it's still not out. And you will know when you get it out because the baby will start crying. Okay, so it's nearly the same, nearly the same. So the only difference is, yeah, I know, I'm telling them that. The only difference is on an adult and a child, we do a belly thrust, your abdominal thrust on this little bit. Whereas on a baby, we do chest thrust in here, in line with their nipples, just with two fingers, just there. And we go five and five, and we keep on going until it comes out. Yeah, I know. Now, if, if they just collapse to the floor and they stop breathing, hopefully you all remember what to do. We go back to star number two, and that's when we begin CPR. But hopefully you being amazing first aiders now, you will be able to save someone's life. If you see someone choking, you will know exactly what to do. You stay calm, you tell them to cough, you do five back slaps, you do five abdominal thrusts, and you keep on going. Okay, Ellie? Good. Right, I'm gonna move on now to talk about the AED. So you can practice that choking on a teddy or on a cushion later on today, just so you can remember it. Because you need to try and remember these things, because when we are panicking, which we shouldn't do, sometimes we forget. So the more we practice, the better we get at something. Okay, right, little baby Anne, you can come and sit up there for me. Okay, and uh, little junior Anne, you can come, but you can stay there. What I'm going to show you all now is how to use an AED. Okay, now this here is an AED, automated external 
defibrillator, the shocky thing. Now, little Ellie, can you come over here for me? Now, this is when I want you to get your bit of paper because you're going to make an AED for me. You're going to get your bit of paper and you're going to maybe cut it in half. So you've got two A5 bits there and then maybe fold it again like so. So you put it into quarters. Oh, look at my last lesson. Into quarters. I'm just going to tear it a little bit. Mm, the best tear. And then I've got two quarters of my paper like so. Okay, so you need those. I'm just going to keep those and put them on the floor for now. I'll explain why you're going to need them. You're also going to need your teddy, your doll, or your cushion on the floor that be instead of my mannequin over here. Okay? Now remember we said we use a defibrillator, the AED, when someone is not breathing. So we've already done the whole primary survey. Who's clever enough to remember that? I wonder if anyone's clever enough to remember that. I just want to say a big shout out to Savannah. Hi Sue. Hi Mimi and Andrew. Now remember the primary survey. It means danger, response, airway, breathing. And we know this person's not breathing, so we called 999 and we ran and got the closest defibrillator, or AED. Now when you open up one of these AEDs, you will see inside there's like a machine that looks a bit like a toy. But it's really easy to use. It has an on and off button and it has a shock button. And it has a little video that tells you what to do as well. Some of them you come across might have flashing lights around lots of pictures, so it's a little bit easier for you to understand. But it talks to you as well as flashing up so you know what to do. Now also inside you'll find a pair of scissors. And these scissors to help us to cut the clothing off because they have to be naked. I know, but they do have to be naked, so we use our scissors to help us. And this is a razor. Now, if anyone's hairy, and I don't mean hairy on their face, hairy on their chest, we might need to shave them. Because these things here, these are pads, they are like big plasters, and they must be able to stick to naked skin, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to use one, and you are gonna use your bits of paper to be the pads instead of an AED, because you probably haven't got one of those at home. So you can use your bit of paper, and if I just show you what I mean by that, so you can put your tape on the back of them, or your blue tack, oh, why is it you can never find the end of these things? Oh, here we go. So fold the sellotape back on itself, so it's a bit like double-sided sticky tape. There we go. It'll be your homework. You could make an AED, couldn't you? And you could practice this at home. So there's your pads that you can practice with your teddy. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the whole sequence and you can try and copy me at home. So your teddy's on the floor or your cushion, whatever you prefer, or your doll. And I've seen some lovely photos. I've seen the, the um, what have I seen? I've seen a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I've seen some really good teddies. I've seen, uh, what was this you see the other day? Um, the Olympic logo, I can't remember their name. And um, I've seen so many photos of your teddies and your dolls. Whatever you're using, whether it's a cushion or a teddy or doll, get them on the floor. So check the air for danger. Hello, can you hear me? Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Help. Open the airway. Do you remember doing this? And then we're going to look and we're listening and we're feeling for them breathing. <gasps> They're not breathing. So straight away, I must call 999 or 112. And then know there's an AED just down the road. So I've gone and got one very quickly and I've come back and I'm going to turn it on. I'll leave it there. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to listen to what it says. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Okay. Apply pads connector next to, to naked pushing chest. Line. I'm going to cut this clothing off until they get naked chest. There we go, naked. If he's hairy, I'm going to shave and Apply shave. Apply pads. Plug in the connector. Then it tells me to put the pads on. And notice I'm doing this before I start CPR. So I put the pads on. And on here, it tells me where to put them as pictures here. So I put the first Apply one. Pads. Plug in the connector. Up here on the right collarbone. So remember, if you haven't got one of the pads, get your sticky bit of paper and put on there instead like so. And then the other one is going to go down pads. onto the left-hand side, underneath the arm, about here. 
on their side. Remember, if you haven't got a pad, put your sticky bit of paper over it, like so. Then it's saying plug it in. So I'm going to plug Light it in. Hack. Insert connector firmly. There we go, so it's plugged in. Analyzing heart rhythm. Do not touch <gasps> the paper. Everyone stay away. No, stay away, Ellie, stay away. Don't touch. Do not touch. Shock advised. Charging. Okay, it's telling me that Stay shock clear needs. of patient. Okay, clear. Clear, everybody. Deliver shock now. You can Press see this light is flashing. Now. I must make sure I hit that button. So clear. Shock delivered. Deliver shock. Pause. Start CPR. Now I can begin CPR to the patient. Okay, so let's go back a step and let's say what it did. So the first thing we did when we realised this person wasn't breathing is... We called 999. And then, because I knew there's one of these just next door down the road, not too far away, I went and got it. And I came back, I turned it on, and then I put the pads on after making sure that there wasn't hairy chest, it wasn't wet, and it was naked. And then I listened to what it said. It said it's analyzing, isn't it? Now, you can't hurt anybody with this. It will only work if it needs to work. So don't worry, you can put it on anybody and it won't shock them unless it needs to. But this one said shock, didn't it? Now we need to make sure we don't touch because if we touch, we're going to get shocked. So then when it was all okay, we went clear, we pushed the button. And then we carried on with CPR or we started CPR. Okay, so that is how to use an AD. And what this will do, this is still on. And every two minutes... This will keep analysing again, and it's analysing for a shockable rhythm. And hopefully, Anne will sit up and start talking to us. Because we managed to do CPR really well, because you've been practising from star number two. And you've got an AED there, as quick as possible. And we called the ambulance, so this person will go to hospital, and hopefully they will make a full recovery. Now I'm just going to turn this AED off. You would never turn yours off, but... I just don't want it talking to me as I'm talking to you. So we've covered quite a lot today. There's lots we need to remember, isn't there, Ellie? We talked about choking on a child. We talked about choking on a baby. And also we've talked about an AED. So what I want you to do, guys, for your homework is to practice those things and send me some photos of you practicing. And also see if any of you can make an AED machine and see if you can practice on your teddies as well. Just make sure you practice which side you put the pads on, you get the correct side. Right collarbone, yeah, and then left hand side is where these pads will go. Please make sure you tag all your photos on. Remember all these um, courses and uh, Facebook live events I'm doing are all free of charge. But if anyone feels so you can make a small donation, um, it's been very much greatly received. But don't worry, just send me your photos. I love, we love looking at your photos. Um, just hashtag it first aid with Emily um, or onto my Instagram page or onto my Facebook page and we will send you a certificate number star number three and we have two more stars the next one is going to be on Wednesday and we're going to talk about the unconscious casualty and I've managed to find a mannequin with arms and legs that just fits in my living room that we can practice doing the recovery position with okay so thank you so much guys Thank you all for listening. Hi, Abby. Um, hi, Savannah. All these other people want me to give you a shout out. Hi, Romeo. Hi, Olivia. Uh, hi, Lucas. Hi, Alana. Hi, Ben. Um, hi, Eilish. Hi, Sorsha. Um, hi, Dermot. So many of you. Thank you so much for listening. It means a lot to us. All the best. Please keep safe. Please keep well and stay at home. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>